Greetings. This is Justin Allen with the Elite Nurse Practitioner. Welcome to the Elite Nurse Practitioner Show, a podcast dedicated to nurse practitioner entrepreneurism and achieving financial freedom, where I talk directly with nurse practitioners who need help. Listen up. Our market is saturated. Jobs can be scarce. We are underpaid. We are undervalued. We are taken advantage of by the sharks within the healthcare system. And frankly, screw that. Sick of it. And it's time for a change. And listen, I'm here to help make that happen. We are powerful. We can forge a path where we are in control of our career and ultimately our financial and personal well-being. You do not need to submit to healthcare administrators and your doctor overlords. You do not have to take the measly salary. You do not have to work 50 to 60 hours a week. There is a different way, and I'm here to show you that path. This podcast is raw and unfiltered. I have not talked to nurse practitioners in this podcast prior to the call outside of an email exchange to schedule the episode. What you're about to listen to is a consultation session between a nurse practitioner and myself. It is real, it is unscripted, it is unplanned, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Anything and everything can happen during our conversation. The nurse practitioners in these episodes are struggling with an issue in their professional or financial life, and they have reached out to me for help. My goal is to help the nurse practitioner with actionable advice that will enhance and improve their professional, business, and financial life. My other goal is to hopefully help my nurse practitioner sisters and brothers build a more productive, powerful, and free life. So I hope the content and information within these podcast episodes does just that. All right, on to the episode. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be talking to Frances, who is a family nurse practitioner. She currently works full-time at an urgent care, but has experience in primary care and emergency medicine. She recently started a virtual weight loss clinic that is doing fair. She is needing assistance with marketing and advertising, as she is having difficulty being found. She also needs assistance on how to integrate men's and women's HRT into her business so she can expand her service lines and ultimately her revenue. Hey, Francis, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for hopping on here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully I can help you out. So uh, bring us up to speed with where you're at. You know, how long you've been a nurse practitioner for, kind of what you've been doing and how you started this uh, virtual weight loss clinic. Uh, of course. Um, so I uh, became a nurse practitioner in 2019. Uh, I started in both family practice as well as emergency medicine. I did both of those for a little over two years and then transitioned out of the hospital setting specifically into urgent care. And then I've been following your page for about a year now or so and just kind of wanted to branch out and start my own business, but just never really was brave enough to do so. So here we are. Now I'm doing a, trying to do this virtual weight loss clinic and then uh, hopefully also men and women's hormone replacement therapy. Got it. Okay. So you took the weight loss course and basically just integrated all that information in it to start this basically this little telemed practice? Correct. Okay. So what services are you offering right now with the weight loss? Are you doing like just semaglutide and fentramine or something? Or Yeah. So those are the two uh, most popular, I mean, among everybody, because most of my patients have uh, tried and failed a bunch of the other oral remedies. And so, yeah, semaglutide and fentramine, and I guess metformin would be the top three. Yeah. And uh, you started this practice just a couple months ago, right? Yeah. So uh, August 1st was like our starting date is what I would say. Okay. So you're about 60 days in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how's business so far? So business is, is decent. I mean, starting out, we currently have um, 13 paying patients, but they're all word of mouth patients currently, you know, people that knew that we were kind of starting this business and wanted to kind of see how it all worked out and are now currently our patients and still are. But I think there's only one, maybe two individuals that are not within like a, like a network of ours. Got it. So basically two cold patients, basically, that didn't really know you right. existed. Gotcha. Exactly. All right. And the rest have been just word of mouth. Okay. So, I mean, it sounds like you're probably making a little bit of money now. Yeah. I mean, not paying myself by any means, you know, just kind of keeping that all tucked away. But um, but yeah, definitely, definitely making some money. Yeah. Good. Good for you. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's only been a couple months. You're making some money. You're, you know, you're not in the red. So, I mean, pat yourself on the back. Okay. That's yeah. Good. So are you basically just seeing patients in just like, you know, your little area or, you know, is your goal to be seeing patients throughout the entire state or expand to multiple states? What are you, you know, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Sure. So I'm licensed in Washington, but I'm also licensed in um, Idaho and Oregon currently, and I'm pending like a New Mexico license as well. So I, I'd like to make it, you know, more out than just my state. Absolutely. Sure. 
Right now, it's just your state, though. I have two patients in Idaho. Interesting. How did they find you? So they're kind of the word of mouth patients. Oh, okay, um, gotcha. You know, All like right. a family was like, oh, hey, they're starting this thing. And and, and it's kind of close to Washington border anyway, um, kind it. of where they live. I got it. Okay. So, you know, if you just kept doing exactly what you're doing right now, mm-hmm. like let's say you didn't spend a dollar on advertising, mm-hmm. you know, you got those two patients who know another patient who then who knows another patient. So like, you know, if you literally just kind of sat here and just let this thing organically just grow, I would say probably in a year or two, you probably would have, you know, a hundred patients, mm-hmm. but it would take some time, right? Sure. That's definitely a route you could take and not spend a, a dollar on marketing and basically just keep all the profit. So you could do that as an option, but it sounds like you're wanting to grow a little bit faster. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know, you only need a hundred patients. You don't need thousands, right? I mean, a right. hundred paying patients, you're making 10,000 bucks a month. So you don't need a lot. So, I mean, you're already, you know, 12%, 13% there. So you don't really have that much further to go. I mean, this can rapidly really grow really quick, you know, and you'll make more money than you ever would have picking up a shift in the ER, right? Oh, gosh, absolutely. <laughs> Nobody right. wants to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. Anyways, though, so you start marketing this. I think the first thing you need to do here is determine where you want to be doing this what states you're going to do this in and what areas you're going to really target. So, you know, you have these licenses, use them. Why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're already, you know, four states basically. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for a telemed practice like this, that's a one girl show kind of thing. That's all you need. You don't need more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So determine, you know, if you want to, you know, just pull the trigger and go ahead and be in all four states. I mean, you have the licenses, so I say, why not? Right. And then determine kind of what areas you want to market in. So this is the thing about advertising online, especially for a telemedicine practice or especially for a business in general that doesn't really have a physical location. It's kind of just marketing, you know, basically to the world, essentially, is that it can dilute your marketing efforts. And so by that, let's say you start advertising your weight loss clinic in Oregon and you Mm -hmm. just advertise throughout the entire state it dilutes your marketing efforts. So by that, you know, everyone in the state spread out is going to be seeing your ads. Sure. And so yeah, that's not a good thing. It's better right. to narrow it down. Okay. So you need to kind of think to yourself, okay, where am I going to market these businesses at in Idaho, Oregon, in Washington, New Mexico, whatever, you know, where am I going to advertise? So what you need to do, you need to do just a little bit of market research. So hop on Google maps, mm-hmm. type in weight loss clinic, and then just start scrolling around to different towns and cities and those kinds of things. Okay. And figure out where there isn't a weight loss clinic, you know, where these services aren't. And then when you advertise on Facebook and Google and whatnot, you can narrow into that specific area. Okay. And now you're making your marketing dollars much more effective. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So do that. Just do a little research. On analysis, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun doing that. You know, just hop on Google and just start scrolling around and figuring out where, uh, you know, where you want to go. Sure. And I mean, we, when I originally like, you know, did my domain and I tried to apply for like a Google business as well, but then Google has kind of been giving me a lot of backlash and saying that because we're, we're a virtual clinic, that it doesn't meet the guidelines. To right. Do. Right. So I don't, right. That's right. why I can't really come up as like a, a number one searched on Google. I, in fact, I've, I've tried, I'm, I'm like, I'm not even on that list, probably like 30 down. And so I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Um, yeah, a Google business listing is only for a local regional kind of business. Sure. Like there's just no way you could have a Google business listing in every single town that every place lives. You know what I mean? There's just no mm-hmm. way, right? Mm-hmm. So my suggestion is is to have one actual listing in one place. So, okay. you know, that'll help you basically increasing your patient volume, building a nice patient census in, you know, one area because people are going to look up weight loss clinic and your Google business will come up. You know, Mm -hmm. if you do that in Washington state, for example, somewhere where you, you know, basically where you live then that's fine, but someone in Oregon, they're never going to see that Google business listing unless Mm -hmm. they actually Google the name of your business. Sure. Right. So for a telemedicine practice, virtual clinic like this, it's important, but it's not important. Okay. Yeah. So you got to have an actual address. Now, Mm -hmm. some nurse practitioners that I've talked with said that they used an iPostal virtual address. Mm -hmm. So they used iPostal and they were able to get a Google business listing using their iPostal virtual address. Gotcha. So you could try that if you want to see if it works. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't though, my opinion, if there is not a whole lot of competition in your area, then it is worthwhile to go spend three to 500 bucks a month Mm-hmm. on a little tiny office somewhere. Yeah. Just so you can have your Google business listing. True. 
Like the office can be empty just to have an address for mail, vendors, suppliers, pharmacies, and then your Google business listing. Yeah, that's true. I I hear that. So there is benefit to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would eventually like to have a space, but obviously there was less overhead to to kind of start doing this virtually initially and see where it, it takes off. Yeah, for sure. Is there competition in your area for this stuff? So there are two um, physicians locally, and I know some people that have actually been patients of those two physicians, but they actually only offer fentramine and they kind of offer their price per month is essentially the same thing as what I offer for my injectable semi-glutide. Right, so, so you have a better deal. Right. But of course, I'm new as well. So yeah, that's kind of so where what? I'm like, how do they how do they find me? Well, they find you by you having a Google business listing there. Mm-hmm. It's important. There's really no way around that if you want to be seeing a lot of patients in your area. Like you have to mm-hmm. have one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because people are searching for you. And so you need to make it as easy as possible for them to find you. And a Google business listing is free. And it's like the number one way customers find businesses. It just is. Mm-hmm. You do it. I do it. Everyone does it. Yeah. Right. So keep that in mind. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a risk to it, but you know, if you don't have a whole lot of competition, then I mean, I don't see much of a risk. Now, what about HRT? You know, what about hormone replacement therapy? I know you said you wanted to integrate some of that stuff in your business. Is there competition for that? Yeah. So there's not as much. I mean, I know there's a couple of functional medicine providers in kind of the same general area, but really no, not down here. Okay. Yeah. If there's not a men's health clinic in your area, you're sitting on a gold mine. How many people live in your city? I mean, about. it's probably like 20,000. That's all you need. You know, there's probably a hundred something thousand in your county, probably more than that. Probably, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. So you have plenty. I mean, 20,000 is all you need. All you need is 50 of those guys. Right. Guarantee if 50 of them are willing to pay for testosterone replacement therapy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I personally don't see much risk here. Okay. Yeah. So you might want to think about it. I know you want to do telemed, which is fine and you should, but yeah. If you want to do something a little local too, why not? I mean, the whole goal of this is for it to turn into a full-time practice at some point so you can quit your job, right? Absolutely. Right. So just consider it. But in terms of trying to uh, you know, get people to find you, the best way to do that is to have Google search ads. Okay. You know, Google search ads, uh, someone types in weight loss clinic or semaglutide or whatever. If you have a Google search ad for that region, so, you know, just off the top of my head, let's say someone in Portland, Oregon or whatever looks up, you know, weight loss clinic near me, you could have a search ad for that area so that your clinic comes up and they click it. Okay. But that costs money. That's pay-per-click. Gotcha. So you could do that. So that's why I'm saying find a few areas that you can target and then put those search ads there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I marketing wise, I've, I've tried Google ads and like Facebook ads. Those are the two marketing strategies that I've been utilizing outside of just word of mouth. You know, you get some conversations that get started, but then it just never really goes anywhere. Oh, how, you know, how much does it cost? Or, you know, what what's what this about? And then it just kind of goes cold. Right, right. Okay, the difference between Facebook and Google, okay? Mm-hmm. Facebook, it's cold leads. You're yeah. sending a you're sending a signal out in hopes that someone's, you know, someone's interested. Sure. Okay. For a Google search ad, they're already interested. It's a warm lead because they're looking to service up. Right. Right. So there's a big difference there. So you're going to hit a lot more, a lot more bites using Google search ads versus Facebook, just sending a signal out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Not, yeah. And that's not to say Facebook ads don't work. They work great. Same thing with Instagram, mm-hmm. Twitter, whatever they work, but it's kind of just sending out a signal. It's just, it's usually cold. If it was me, I probably would focus more on Google search ads for this. Okay. And it'd probably be more effective in terms of your marketing budget goes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, spend 500 to 1000 bucks a month. Just start there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that pretty much destroys all your profit, but if you want this thing to grow, you got to invest money in your business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I agree with that. Yeah. Any questions about how you're going to, you know, market or advertise this? I mean, marketing is definitely not my niche at all. I mean, I think there's people <laughs> that have specialties for a reason and, and marketing is not mine. So, I mean, I have the marketing course. I'm kind of halfway through that. So I'm definitely learning a bit. And I have a kind of a graphic designer that's kind of trying to help us out in in terms of just giving good feedback. But I, I just, yeah, I, I guess the marketing piece is, is, is my most difficult, like Achilles heel. Sure. I mean, it is for a lot of nurse practitioners. Well, Google search ads don't require images. Mm-hmm. It's extremely simple to set up and start. Okay. You don't, you don't need to pay someone to do that for you. It's very, very mm-hmm. easy. All right. You just create basically a Google ad account, click create yeah. ad and create a search ad. And then you target the area you want the search ads to pop up in. And that's that. It's very simple. 
it's just the ad copy that really needs to pique someone's interest. And so in the marketing course that you're taking, there's that bonus part um, of the course that talks about how to write good ad copy, how to write, you know, basically how to write an ad. Uh-huh. So make sure you review that. Okay. Um, but for a Google search ad, it only needs to be a couple sentences. So imagine someone hears from someone else that semaglutide is a miracle weight loss drug. Mm-hmm. So they go to Google and they type in semaglutide clinic or semaglutide doctor or you know prescription semaglutide or whatever. So sure. you have a Google search ad for semaglutide. So when someone types in that in their search bar, your clinic pops up as the number one result as an advertisement. And it can be something as simple as seeing patients in that area that you target. Mm-hmm. For semaglutide, you know, miracle weight loss drug, call the day for 10% off. That's literally it. Yeah. Don't complicate. It doesn't need to be complicated. All right. So give it a try. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's super easy. It's really not that hard. Um, I just don't want you to spend money on paying someone to do it for you right now. No, yeah. And I mean, I'm trying not to. I'm, I'm definitely trying to to figure it out on my own. I just feel like just not happening, I guess. Well, listen, when I first started my first business, I never, ever advertised anything in my entire life. And I just hopped on Google. I created an ad account. I just kind of just started playing with it. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things. You got to just jump in and kind of get your feet wet doing it. Like everyone's, everyone's new at some point with it. It just takes a little bit of experience and just doing it. That's a good point. Any other questions about advertising or marketing? Uh, No, no. Okay. So what else did you want to talk about? Well, if we're um, adding those like uh, other modalities that we had talked about, hormone replacement therapy and men's health. How is the best way to really go about that? I mean, we, my business, uh, you know, the business name is, it's kind of generic, broad, I guess, not generic, but more broad to be able to utilize that. But I don't want to, you know, have my existing page be looking like cluttered with like, what the heck are you coming here for? And what are you actually doing? Um, So do you just do like an additional services page? Do you do like a whole separate domain for those other services? Because I'm assuming most of those people come in as current clientele, but that's going to be like your easier patients to to add on to that, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the number one rules of marketing is, is that it's always significantly cheaper to sell more products to your established customers than to obtain a new customer. Okay, always. All right. I hope everyone's enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick break to thank everyone listening and also give a big thank you to all of my social media followers and email subscribers. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our email list at www.elitenp.com and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Email subscribers will receive updates on new weekly podcast episodes, multiple weekly articles we publish, new courses, and everything else related to helping you succeed. Remember, all elite nurse practitioner courses are designed to help you build a niche practice, increase your financial strength, and to break free from the rat race. If I can break free and the other countless nurse practitioners can break free, then so can you. Additionally, please share this podcast with your other nurse practitioner sisters and brothers out there. The more NPs that venture out on their own, the stronger our profession will become. Now, let's get back to the episode. In terms of how to do this, you could do both. You could just Mm -hmm. add separate pages onto your website for each service. So you have one for weight loss, one for men's health, one for women's health. So you have separate pages just on your website. So when they land on your homepage, it has the name of your clinic. We are a virtual clinic specializing in weight loss services, men's health and testosterone replacement therapy and women's health and hormone replacement therapy or whatever. And then you can just have below that, like just a picture for weight loss, picture for men's health, a picture for women's health, you know, to Mm -hmm. learn more, click here and it takes them to another page. That's, you know, just basically in your navigation bar that talks about the service. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, it could be something as simple as that. If you wanted to advertise each service line separately and do it under a separate domain, Mm -hmm. you know, it could be the name of your practice. And then, you know, after the name of it, you know, weight loss clinic, men's health clinic or women's health clinic. So you could have like three different domains and just basically you name your practice, men's health, women's health or weight loss. And you have separate websites and make it look as if it's a completely separate business. Gotcha. You could do that. Um, it just costs a little bit more money and takes a little bit more, you know, thought to basically do it and advertise it. Sure. In your case, I don't think it's necessary to go down that route right now unless you have tens no. of thousands of dollars to spend doing it. No, no, no. Yeah, not towards that. 
exactly. So I think maybe just putting the services um, and just as separate pages on your current website would probably be fine. And then when you advertise the men's health, when you advertise the women's health, when you advertise the weight loss, make sure the patients are directed to those specific pages. Gotcha. Like that yeah. landing site, pretty much, right? A landing page, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And you know, you could do these as DBAs, doing business ads. You don't have to form new LLCs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was my next question. Like you just, yeah, doing business ads. Yeah. Go to the Elite NP website, EliteNP.com. Click on mm -hmm. all articles at the top. There's a search function there mm -hmm. and type in DBA. There's two articles on how to do it. Okay, cool. Yeah, but basically you don't need separate LLCs and all that kind of stuff unless you just truly want to create separate businesses. No, not my goal. Right. At this point, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. And this is the thing, you know, let's say you advertise men's health, weight loss, and women's health. You know, you might be surprised. Like you might find a gold mine in Idaho for men's health. Mm -hmm. And then you might find a gold mine for weight loss in northern New Mexico or something. Like, Sure. That's true. Yeah. I never really thought about it that way. Right. I've used this analogy multiple times. You're just throwing a bunch of fishing lines out there and you're just seeing what, you know, what bites and which ones are, you know, which ones are the keepers. Right. That's of all, course. Literally all you're doing. So, so yeah, it's kind of experimental and that's kind of the fun thing about having a business. It's, it, it's really interesting to see what takes off and what does not Yeah. Like with the elite NP, there's some courses that I've stolen a lot of that. I wasn't expecting it. Like the world, the world told me. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's true. So any other questions about that in terms of the DBA and, you know, integrating the other services into your practice? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I, I think uh, probably just adding service lines on the additional on the website is probably what I'll probably start with. Yeah, I don't think you need much more than that, to be honest with you. I think that's more than enough for now. What about the clinical aspects of it? Do you have any questions about that in terms of how you're going to spread that kind of stuff out in terms of the service lines or using different pharmacies or, or do you feel you got a pretty good grasp on that? I mean, I think I do. I, I'm hooked up with a couple of the pharmacies now. I'm currently only utilizing one just because it's been working out very well. Sure. But I know that, you know, some of those other modalities, some of the other pharmacies, I think would probably be more beneficial just with what they have to offer. And not only that, but take into consideration too of, you know, when you have multiple vendors, it provides you blankets of security. Mm -hmm. So at the time of this recording, that hurricane blew through Florida. Right. Our two top pharmacies that we use at my men's health clinic are in Florida. Mm. Guess what? There ain't no prescriptions being filled right now. Oh, uh, right. And we fill lots of prescriptions on a daily basis at my men's health clinic, you know, 10, yeah. 15 prescriptions a day. Thank God I have another pharmacy in Texas. Exactly. Right. So it's a good idea to have multiple accounts with multiple vendors and multiple pharmacies for that exact reason, because that hurricane is completely out of my control. Right. Oh, of course. Right. So just be, you know, be redundant in terms of that goes, just like your finances, just be as redundant as possible. Okay. No, I, th I think that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So do you have any other questions? I was just kind of looking through my notes here. I think we kind of hit on everything. No, I don't, I don't think so. Okay, cool. Now this is kind of a straight to the point uh, podcast. I kind of like, uh, kind of liked it. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Just straight to the point. Boom, boom, boom. We knocked it out. Yeah. Okay. Didn't throw uh, too many curveballs. It's good. <laughs> Yeah. How are you doing financially? I mean, I know you got this job and stuff and, you know, are you investing a lot of money in the business? Just tell me a little bit about that. I'm just curious. And, you know, people listening to this kind of really like to hear, you know, what other, sure. maybe what other, you know, what other nurse practitioners are making and how much they put in their business while, you know, while they're doing it. And that seems to be one of the biggest fears people have. Sure. And I mean, that's kind of one of the biggest reasons I've decided to do virtual versus um, like a brick and mortar was because of the, the startup cost was being significantly less. I have five kids at home. And so my biggest goal is to not be at work as much. Uh, so I really like that idea of telemedicine. Financially wise, I mean, I have a great job. Full time is like less than 30 hours a week. So I really nice. can't complain. And then I can still do the side gig on yeah. the side. So that part's great. And I marketing wise, I mean, I think I am spending about three to $500 a month, um, but maybe just not as uh, efficiently as I, I could be. But it's definitely very doable. I yeah. really didn't think about it for a long time. I, was, I think I was just worried about pulling that trigger, but it's very doable once you kind of wrap your head around all those all those other fears. Like I said, marketing and domains and websites, that just is not my niche. Well, let me ask you, how much have you invested in this business? I mean, how much did it cost you to get, you know, to get this started? I mean, you pay for the courses, obviously, right. and then you got a website and stuff. So, I mean, how much, how much did you put into it? Well, if you're smart about the courses, though, I mean, I use my continuing education money for with my current employer. <laughs> Say, shame um, on you. You're not using that yeah. the urgent care. Shame <laughs> on you. <laughs> well, kind of. I mean, I'm technically into like a family practice urgent care. So some sure. of those 
sure. the lines kind of run along the same course. Sure. You know? So that kind of worked out in my favor. But yeah, I mean, with the courses and domains and a little bit of advertising, I mean, I would say less, probably 2,000. And that's nice. <laughs> even being like really that's generous that's probably right. being very generous two thousand bucks look at that so anyone listening to this right now like i mean come on two thousand dollars any nurse practitioner out there should be able to save two to three thousand bucks to start their own business you know what oh, I mean? right right yeah yeah and you're avoiding loans and debt and all that kind of crap so well good for you yeah yeah that's awesome okay cool well do you have any other questions at all uh, no, no, that's just been very helpful. I appreciate you calling and being part of the podcast. No, absolutely. Um, I like to end every episode with you asking me a question. Is there any questions that you've uh, ever wanted to ask me? Well, I know that you, besides your men's health, your first, uh, one of your first businesses was a, like a medical cannabis clinic. I guess the only question I have about that, I haven't purchased that course and Washington's like a, uh, go, go cannabis state. But, um, I guess, do those people come back? Is it like a yearly situation? With that, typically yes. So in most states, they um they have to come back every year for a like a renewal of their cannabis so, card. So it's like a handicap placard. You have to come back like every. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had it compared to that, but yeah, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's like every year they have to get their card renewed, basically. Okay. Yeah. So the thing about medical cannabis is, is that it's not a business that you can scale and grow. Mm-hmm. To where it turns into a passive income stream, like like your weight loss clinic or sure. you know, men's health or whatever. Okay, it's not like that because you're only making money at the time of the visit. Mm-hmm. It's a typical treat and street kind of thing, right? Sure. They come That's in. Kind they, of where, yeah. yeah, yeah. You on the other hand, these people are paying you on a monthly basis. Oh, absolutely. Right. So there's that recurrent income, and so that's how you grow a business. You know, a medical cannabis clinic is. It's a one-time kind of thing, and you you might see them in a year. Sure. If they come back and renew their card. A lot of times they don't because, you know, Joe Schmo next door grows it, sells it to them for cheaper than a dispensary. <laughs> mm. I mean, this is just yeah. the reality of this. I mean, that's just, that's what happens, you know? Because, I mean, if, you know, if they get pulled over or whatever, if it's in a recreational state, I mean, they don't know where they bought that, got that cannabis from. They can still get it on the black market, basically. You know what I mean? Right. And oftentimes it's cheaper. So it is what it is. That's what medical cannabis is. Treat and street. Quick cash, super easy, super low liability. I mean, I still do it. I don't plan on ever closing it down. It's a great little side hustle. I mean, I don't make sure. I don't make a killing doing it, but I mean, you know, extra five, ten thousand bucks a month. I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining. Right. Yeah, of course. So yeah, yeah. Did you actually have any specific questions about it? Uh no, no, that was kind of just my, kind of just curious. Just, want, just curious, just because I mean yeah. yeah, you you always wonder how how else you can you can benefit and yeah. um be marketable. Sure, sure. And you know, in Washington, um, you know, it's recreational and that's fine. I mean, medical cannabis cards, there's benefit to it. Lower taxes, different THC concentrations, you can typically carry more. So I mean, employers, employers will typically let employees, you know, test positive for cannabis as long as they have a cannabis card. So I mean, there are benefits to having it. So if it is something you want to start on the side, you could definitely try it and just and just see what happens. It, It costs nothing to start. Cool. Well, cool deal. Well, I appreciate you hopping on the phone call and I hope uh, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again. I appreciate your time. All right. You're welcome. Take care. Have a good day. You too. Bye. 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 All right. I hope everyone enjoyed the conversation with Frances. I mean, she started this practice for a couple thousand bucks, a little virtual telemedicine weight loss practice. I mean, it cost her nothing to start this. And that's the, really the big thing I want you guys to walk away with here. It doesn't cost that much money to start one of these side hustles, guys. It really doesn't, okay? Anybody can start one of these little side hustles. It costs nothing. You know, a few thousand bucks and you're ready to go and you're ready to see patients. If you follow the model in the course, it is a piece of cake to get started, right? Basically, her investment has already paid for itself and her business is only going to grow from here, okay? I mean, it's only going to get busier. And if she markets this appropriately and she gives it time, she's patient with it, there will be a moment where she will be able to step away from her full-time job and focus on her own business. And the beautiful thing about it is that it will start turning into a passive income stream for her because patients are paying her on a monthly basis and she doesn't need to see them for every three to six months, depending on how she structures it, okay? So it does not cost that much to start one of these businesses. All right. All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. I know it was kind of a shorter one, but there was a lot of great knowledge in it. So I hope everyone enjoyed it. Talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.
Thank you for listening to the show. Quick legal disclaimer, the content of this podcast is meant for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be used as legal, financial, medical, regulatory, or practice specific advice. For information pertaining to your specific legal, financial, medical, or practice specific needs, please be sure to consult with your lawyer, CPA, medical director, and or your state's practice laws and the most up-to-date clinical guidelines. As always, do your due diligence when it comes to any information found online and in podcasts. The content in this podcast is copyrighted by Galaxy Medical Southwest 2022 and cannot be duplicated, rebroadcasted, or reproduced without our written permission.